The first thing that's surprising when flying over the Amazonian forest is how it resembles an endless broccoli plantation. Welcome to French Guiana. It's not the first time I've been here. I'm in Cayenne, in the French prefecture known more for its launching of rockets than its cuisine. Guiana cuisine resembles those who make it, cosmopolitan and spicy. The main market in Cayenne is as colorful as the food made from the products sold here. In the early morning, when the sky doesn't know whether to shine or cry, I have an appointment to meet up with a local friend. I'm in the entrance of Cayenne's main markets, and I'm meeting up with, and there she is now, Marie-Thérèse. Hello, Marie-Thérèse, how are you? Hi, Pascal. Fine, and you? Listen, I won't hide from you that I do know this market. I've already been here, but it's a pleasure to discover it a little bit differently with you. So, show me around the market. Where are we already? We're in the centre of Cayenne, the capital of French Guiana. We're in the principal marketplace, which is open Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays. It opens at 6am, even a little earlier, until 2pm when an alarm announces closing time and then everything closes until the next opening. So obviously there are fruit and vegetables in this market, but we can also find lots of different stall holders selling many different products. In the market, you can find fruit, vegetables, meat, spices, and... Uh... Fish? I saw that there was fish. Exactly. We're not so far from the river, which is just a few meters from here, where there are all the varieties of fish found in Guiana. I noticed in the market there's a foreign community which has become part of the Guyanese community. There are the Laotians who moved here and brought with them produce that they grow themselves. Absolutely. We have the Hmong who live at Cacao and who stock the markets every day it's open. The Hmong brought with them their local products and their specialties which didn't exist in Guyana before. Among other things, uh, the rabutins, for example. The Mongs are very early in the morning, the first to arrive. What do you mean by very early? Uh, 1 a.m. in the morning. Oh, yes, that's early. Very, very, very early. <laughs> Too early for me. They set up early, which allows you to have a soup on your way home from having a night out. Speaking of soup, you're going to let me try one later after we've gone around the market. OK. I suggest we go shopping. Yes. I'll be on my way now and we'll meet up a little later. See you later. See you later, Marie-Thérèse. With 94% of its land covered by forests, Guiana, which is the biggest French department, has relatively little land to cultivate. The land is difficult to work, and it's the Mongs from Laos who supply the markets in Cayenne with fruit and vegetables. In this market, the majority of the stalls sell fruit and vegetables, and notably here there are a lot of vegetables. Yes. So what do you suggest your customers buy here at the market? I sell only spices, all the basic spices. I have some mild peppers. That's it? Sold in little sachets? For one euro. Are they hot or not? No, not at all. It adds flavor. Exactly, it adds flavor. And do you add this to fish or meat? In anything you want. In all the meals it adds flavor. It's not hot, so it can be used in anything. What do we have here? That's gumbo. You sell this in small quantities? Yes, one euro a bunch. And so the same thing, it's very common in Guyanese food? Exactly. What other products are there? Oh, here's something rather particular that we spoke of. How does this grow? Because it's very unique. Is it breeds? It's bread muffin. What's so special about this? Oh, I don't think there's anything special. But firstly, in Guiana, they're not familiar with it. Whereas the Brazilians know it well, as do people from Madagascar or Reunion. From the Indian Ocean? Yes, exactly. It's a type of spinach. It's a little like spinach, but it has a kick to it. It's hot. I thank you. You're welcome. I'll leave you to get on with it because it's starting to get busy. And business is business. The recipe we're going to discover now uses Breed's Mafen, this plant that we were speaking of with Thephara. Here are the ingredients needed to make Vivano Amazonas for one person. Red Snapper Amazonas.
Jean-René Paul is chef of La Belle Amadée restaurant in Cayenne, and he's making this delicious recipe. He starts by slicing the red snapper in fillets. He puts the breed's mafain in a pan. This is a plant that has flowers with a hot, peppery taste. A taste sensation is guaranteed. He puts salt on the fish and places it on a bed of breed's mafain. He pours tukupi juice on it, a hot sauce from the Amazon region extracted from the manioc root. A generous amount. Then he leaves it to marinate. During this time, he peels a manioc tuber, which can be found more and more in supermarkets. He then dices them up into one centimeter cubes. Now it's time for the Chinese cabbage leaves. He removes the central nerves, which are not only hard but also bitter, then he cuts them up finely. Paul then does the same thing with the fresh coriander leaves. This variety comes from the Amazonian region, but coriander found closer to home will also do. All the ingredients are ready to go into the pan. Paul turns on the heat under the fillets of red snapper that lie on their bed of breeds mafain, lulled by little waves of tukupi juice. He covers all this and cooks for 10 to 15 minutes. Keep an eye on the tukupi sauce. It must boil in order to cook the red snapper. Finished cooking, he moves on to the manioc roots. The red snapper is ready. He removes it with care, preserving its bed of breeds mafen. He pours the cooking juice in a pan and lets it slowly reduce. He pours olive oil in another pan, and when it's hot, he puts in the manioc with salt and pepper. He adds cut up shallots and coriander. After a minute, he adds the Chinese cabbage leaves so that they remain crunchy. He mixes everything together, lets it brown, stirring constantly. After a minute or so, he adds a spicy cream, sour cream mixed with cayenne powder, some salt, and this is mixed with the preparation. The tukupi juice has now reduced and it joins the sour cream. Then it's reduced once again, stirring constantly. The Amazonian vivano, or red snapper, is now finished. A beautiful dish. Paul now prepares the side dish. The fish on a bead of breeds mafain needs some vegetables to add a sparkle. He coats this with the cream and sprinkles on some coriander to add color. This delicious meal with very few calories brings to your table a little touch of the Amazon and much success with your friends. I'm back at the markets in KN. People are starting to arrive now. Here, people like to buy fresh produce, whether it's fish, as we saw earlier, or fruit and vegetables. Supermarkets are there to supply produce that is long-lasting, such as biscuits, water, or frozen foods. But in the markets, there are things you can't find elsewhere. I'm with Lady Diana. Hello. Well, I've seen some interesting things on your stall, like that on the bottom on the left there. Yes. Now, that's something I've never seen. It's written there on it, lemon powder. In powder form. Well, what is it? Well, it's crystallized lemon. Just like sugarcane makes sugar, it's the same. It's lemon juice that's been crystallized in the form of lemon powder. In terms of taste, is it the same thing? Does it really...? Yes, yes, like lemon. And using it...? It's made from lemon juice. And how do you use this? Like lemon juice, for fish, to eat, to put in anything. Just like lemon. Can it... Uh, Replace lemon. Can you make lemonade with it, for yes, example? Yes, of course. It's very concentrated. Is it sweet? No. Oh. Lemons are sour. I'm going to show you something that really has its place here in the Guiana culture. It's quack. The famous quack. Can you tell me about it? It comes from the manioc root. We eat it just like that. You put it in a plate. Then we add a little bit of water so it swells up. Then we eat it with fish, with red algae and a little sauce. 
You could almost say it's a side dish, or even simplify it by saying that what pasta is to the Italians, couac is to cuisine... Uh, in Guyana, exactly. If you come to Cayenne, come to see Lady Diana for her crystallized lemon, but also for her smile. I'm now returning to the Isles in the market to find Marie Therese. She said she'd be inside, and there we can buy one of the oldest Guyanese and Amazonian specialities. So here we are in the meat section, and I can see Marie Therese, who's certainly buying. Marie Therese? Ah, oh, Pascal. Here I am. What are you doing? Are you buying meat? I'm purchasing some smoke dried chicken. Ah, the famous smoke dried meats. There you go. That we find in the markets. Yes, you can find smoke dried chicken or fish. In general, we smoke dry meat so that it lasts longer because we didn't have refrigerators. And that was the technique that the whole of the Amazonian region, in fact. So how does smoke drying work anyway? Well, we marinate the chicken or fish in spices. Once it's well marinated, we prepare a barbecue. A uh, barbecue? <laughs> a barbecue with charcoal. But so that there is a lot of smoke, we add wet bread, which helps with the smoke. Oh, that lets off the humidity. Yes. You then put the fish or chicken on the grill, cover it with banana leaves or a metal sheet so that it's really cooked. How long does it take to cook? It's not long, but you take into account the flesh of the chicken or fish. I'll leave you to buy your chicken. OK. We'll meet up later. I'm You're waiting for waiting my soup. for your soup. See you later. Whilst waiting for my soup, here's a simple recipe in which the ingredients are classically from Guyana, prawns. Even if there has been a reduction in fishing these last few years, here are the ingredients for prawn tempura. This tempura recipe, which is without doubt the way of frying in Japan, is quick to make. To start, Jean-René Paul, our chef, prepares the prawns. They're plump enough to be peeled easily. He starts with the tails. It's vital to carefully remove the frontal corn and the digestive tube, which is quite bitter and unfit for eating. It's important to rinse them under clean water. Ideally, the prawns should be raw and very fresh. To make the mixture, Paul mixes 100 grams of flour with 20 grams of corn flour, a 5 to 1 dosage. He adds 200 milliliters of water and mixes. He adds a little more water until the consistency is fluid and light. He heats up the oil in a deep pan. Paul dries the prawns. The trick is to put the mixture in the fridge for 10 minutes or so while waiting for the oil to reach the right temperature to fry. Once the mixture is taken out of the fridge, mix it well. He dips the prawns head first in the mixture. Another thing is to mix them and gently turn them over so that they fry lightly and evenly. After a minute, he takes them out. The beauty of the tempura mixture is that it doesn't hold on to the fatty oil, so the prawns are very digestible. I told you this recipe was a quick one, and promise kept, it's already finished. Now to garnish. A touch of sweet and sour sauce, wakame seaweed that can be found at the grocers, our friends the prawns done up in their crusty suits.
All that's left is to enjoy them. Come with me to the Cayenne Market, where Mary Therese has once again left me on my own, but she did explain to me that Cayenne pepper was originally from South America and had been brought here by Christopher Columbus's companions when they arrived in the Caribbean. It has good standing among spices. What's nice here is that I have the impression that I know where I am. I'm at Dee Dee's. Hello, Dee Dee. How are you? I'm fine. I'm rather curious. Indeed, I'd like to know just how you make your Creole blood sausage. Well, I make it with spices and pork with a little blood. And what spices do you use? You use hot spices as well? Oh, I put a lot of hot spices. If there are no spices, there's no taste. Yes, but it depends on the quantity, because if it's too spicy, it's hard. If there's too much, no, no. You generally like your food spicy here in Guyana? Yes. Because it has to be quite hot. Isn't it too spicy? No, it's not too much. Would you like to try a little to see? OK, I'm tempted. Just a little bit, huh? Oh, Didi, no, that's too much. I'll never eat all of that blood sausage. Oh, no, it's OK. So, a small blood sausage made by Didi. Do you make this every day? Yes. Mm, in the morning, I suppose. Mm, this is really good. Every mm. morning, yes. And I can tell you I've eaten my share of blood sausages. Mm. Yes. This is very, very good. Mm. A little spicy, but just enough to make you want to drink a little. I know you're making something a little surprising here. I'm not quite sure, but is that white sausage? Yes, white sausage. Creole. Oh, it's only white sausage that's eaten as the main dish, or...? With prawns. Yes, yes, some people don't eat the blood, so there's no blood in white sausage. Oh, no, don't cut it. I'm more than happy with it, just as it is. But I think it's very, very good. I'll have a few later. I'll be back. I have one okay. or two things to do, then I'll pick up the sausages. OK. Thanks, Didi. Off you go. Goodbye. What's nice about the KN market, as in a lot of markets, is the conviviality. Meeting people like Dee Dee's a real pleasure, even more important than what they're selling, in my mind. To count the number of exotic foods sold in this market would take hours. Take the rambutans, a fruit originating in Asia, also called hairy lychees. Hello. What am I doing? Only four to five hundred meters to the main exit of the market, and here I am in this hall among all the fish stalls, and I bump into Marie Therese. Hi, Pascal. So, Marie Therese, you're interested by fish? I find there's quite a choice. Yes, Pascal. Here we have marinated seafood, which is so practical for busy women such as myself. I'll have a little something when I get back to the house. Meaning, people buy this then all they have to do is cook it up at home. Yes, you, you just cook it. We're going to look at a recipe in a few minutes, a recipe with black margate, but I'm not quite sure what it is. It's a type of sea bream. It's very sought after, very rare Oh, it's that one there. Quite delicious. Could you show me some red snapper? Here's a beautiful red snapper, comes in many sizes, but it's true, it's much smaller compared to the other fish, such as the palika. That's a palika there? It's the big one, the giant one. Wow, it's beautiful. That's for the family to eat. No, because, well, it could be for a big family barbecue outside, but you've noticed that the red snapper is six euros the kilo. Not expensive? No, not too expensive. It's eaten fried, grilled or in a casserole. I'll let you finish your shopping. OK. We'll catch up later. Still waiting for my soup? No problem. See you later. I've been up for a long time now, and Dee Dee's sausage has given me quite an appetite. And this recipe here will just make things worse. A black Margate sandwich with cardamom butter for one person. Here's what you'll need. The black margate is a fish found on the east coastline of America, and so in French Guiana as well. 
Paul, who is still our chef, seasons the black margate with salt and pepper. He skins the pineapple. Then peels the sweet potato, cuts it up, taking care about his fingers. Then onto the stove it goes. I told you this recipe took very little preparation. Paul starts by putting the sweet potatoes into boiling water. He heats up some oil. When it's hot enough, he puts the black margate in to brown. In another pan, he fries the pineapple slices. After 30 seconds, he pours in some rum and leaves it to color with the flame off. He turns over the black margate fillet, then puts two pineapple slices on it. He wets it with white wine and after 30 seconds puts the pan into a preheated oven at 180 degrees for 5 minutes, no longer. While the fish is cooking, he pours the rest of the white wine into a pan, adds some cardamom seeds so that it infuses and leaves it to simmer for 3 or 4 minutes. He adds 40 grams of butter, then lets it reduce with the white wine and seasons accordingly. The sweet potato is now cooked. He puts it through a colander, puts it in the pan and mashes it with a fork. He seasons it with salt and pepper and a pinch of cumin. To give it that something special, he pours over it 100 milliliters of sour cream. This part is then added to the black margate in the oven, so it's at the same temperature. This recipe is defined as a sandwich because it's put on a plate by successive slices. This black margate sandwich with cardamom butter will delight your guests. Oh, just one thing, if you can't find black margate, which is highly likely, you can replace it by big sea bream fillets. It's a recipe that will easily delight your guests and bring a taste of the exotic to your table. I'm for the last time in the KN market, as is Marie Therese. She stopped at one of the little canteens which has been giving off the most appetizing smells since early this morning. Well, Marie-Thérèse, I've been waiting to try this soup, and here we are. And here we are. It's the famous Vietnamese soup. In this soup, you have a stock that has been simmering for several hours with a lot of herbs, and vixen, and fish sauce, and siu sauce, and salt. This is perfect. Perfect. If you prefer prawns or if you're allergic to pork... Should I be careful of that? Oh, that, that's pepper. Oh, that's it. Exactly. It's not cherries and it's not something else. Another aspect of French Guiana is the cuisine because there are so many products, so many things. It results in a very diverse cuisine. I wonder if the Guyanese are really foodies at heart. 
I can't believe it. Yes, we love to eat. Our cuisine is influenced by all the cultures that arrived here. We've tasted and adapted them. Marie Therese, I thank you for showing me the market. Thank you, Pascal. Okay, Anne. And now to try the famous soup. But it isn't this that will bring you back to Guiana. It's the Awara stock. Next time, thank you anyway. Next time, thank you anyway. I regret having to leave Guiana so soon. I really wish people would stop calling it Green Hell or other excessive names. I've known its deep forest and long rivers for a long time. I've never come across such rare flora and fauna and people who love their land like they do.